We start moving into the final days of August. Fall is almost one month away, and we begin the slow slide into winter. Out there on the left edge, you can see some hurricane activity. That's Hurricane Gilma, a high-end Category 2 storm, moving to the west. It will strengthen into a low-end Category 3 storm before weakening. Here's the general weather map for the U.S. this afternoon. We've got a strong bear clinic low in southeastern Montana. Little stationary front extending through the Salt Lake City area into the Great Basin. On the other side, we've got this backdoor front entering Texas. Some very warm temperatures just off the Caprock, up to 111 degrees at Abilene this afternoon, contrasting with much cooler weather across the southeast. This frontal boundary through Florida associated with some thunderstorms and showers this afternoon and a cold core low and old occlusion exiting the northeastern U.S. There's a closer look at that. You can see the structure on this thing. Dry slot across Virginia into the Atlantic. See how it's clear out there off of Block Island, Cape Cod, and Long Island. So that's going to be that dry air wrapping around the south side of this barotropic low across New York. And in that area, cold core convection as the cooler conditions, the combination of cold air advection and a cold pool aloft helping to generate convective precip across a very wide area. These are going to be low-topped showers and storms. Further out to the east, that's going to be where the main frontal zone is. So that's out of the picture, and we're just left with this residual low. But the temperatures, man, take a look at this. We have got 50s in some parts of New England this afternoon. These are mid-afternoon temperatures, 59 at Burlington, 53 at Saranac Lake, looking at 59 at Montreal, and what else do we have here? Well, it does warm up as you go south. 74 at Albany, and we pick up to 76 at New York with a west wind. You can see those lower dew points indicating some of that dry air wrapping around the south side of that system. Here's the structural view at 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet. You don't see this on too many channels, but here... We're not afraid to take a look at the technical view. So low pressure area across northern Vermont into western Maine. So that is the cold core low. Here's the high pressure area coming down out of Canada and a little bit of a low level jet across the northern plains. So there is some severe weather there. We're going to look at that shortly. But let's focus on this area, go up to 700 millibars. You can see that low pressure area in the very same spot up there near Burlington, Vermont. 500 millibars, about 18,000 feet, same area. So this indicates vertical stacking. And look at the increase of intensity in that system. We pick up to 30 to 50 knot winds aloft, maybe even 65 to 70 down to the south. And our final stop at 300 millibars, same location that is very classic vertical stacking the upper level flow still pretty strong looking at maybe 80 knot winds down to the south that's going to be the location of that polar front jet in the southeastern u.s temperatures below normal due to the influence of that large anticyclone across the eastern u.s highs today only 80 degrees at charlotte 82 at Nashville, and 84 at Atlanta. Down to the south, though, south of that frontal boundary, we do get into that warmer air, looking at 93 at Miami today, and numerous storms all the way from Jacksonville, Columbus, south towards Vero Beach, Orlando, and Miami. We do have heat advisories this afternoon for southeastern Florida, including Miami, West Palm Beach, and the Keys, looking for heat indexes up to 105 to 111. In the southern plains, not really a whole lot to see, but we do have some elevated convection developing around Abilene, out towards central Texas. We do have some extreme heat there. Let's take a look at that. 
There's the current temperatures as we record this, 112 at Del Rio, 110 at San Angelo, and even 106 at Austin. The backdoor front located about right there. We don't really see the effects of that until we get further to the northeast. DFW only 95, 92 at Texarkana, and down to a pleasant 86 at Little Rock. However, where we have that heat there, a few high-based storms trying to get going, those appear to be a few right there around Brownwood. Let's take a look at the echo tops on that. Looks like towering cumulus right now, only about 20,000 feet. And those are definitely going to be high-based because the dew points in this region, only about 45 to 50 degrees. So those are going to be bases up near maybe 8,000 feet. Other showers down to the south. If any of these get going and become mature thunderstorms, there is going to be the potential for gusty outflow winds because this is a inverted V setup. And let me just show you what we're talking about. Here's the current charts from Pivotal Weather, and I'll just show you the forecast here. You can see it trying to break out some thunderstorms around Austin. Let's take a look at the Theta E. That's pretty much a good product to start with because that shows you the moisture band. There it is right there, a little bit to the east of that frontal boundary, which is going to be located right there. So let's drop a forecast sounding around Brownwood. And there you can see the inverted V. Saturated conditions up at about 15,000 feet with drier, lower relative humidity down near the surface. That temperature dew point spread about 42 degrees and that is going to translate to a very high base. You can see the lifted condensation level around three kilometers. That is about nine to 10,000 feet. So that's, yeah, it's going to be a very high based cloud. Checking the weather across the northern plains, we do have activity in eastern Wyoming, western South Dakota, and western Nebraska. The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk. That focuses on eastern Montana all the way down to the Rapid City area. And the general thinking is these storms will come off the higher terrain and interact with some of the moisture down at lower elevations. There's an extreme close-up look at that activity. Storms all the way from Chadron up to the Black Hills and into the Gillette and Sheridan area. In the southwest, no real heat problems. We're near seasonal normals. Highs today looking for 106 at Phoenix, 107 at Las Vegas, and 98 at Tucson. The monsoon pattern definitely underway all through Arizona and across the central Rockies as well. We do have a marginal risk across southeastern Arizona from Tucson all the way up to Phoenix, looking for the possibility of strong convective wind gusts as this active monsoon pattern continues. And in the northwestern U.S., cool conditions continuing. Seattle, 70 degrees, Portland, 76, and Boise, 86. You can see the enhanced upper-level flow, the jet pattern running about like that, shearing off some of these storm tops in the Rockies. And we're going to see the pattern continuing to cool down as we go into the weekend. That is our tour of the weather in the lower 48 this afternoon. One little footnote, look at those hot temperatures in northern Wyoming, 101. But there's going to be a big change going into Friday and Saturday. We're going to be looking at highs in the 50s in Yellowstone National Park. Heading into the Pacific, we are starting to see the influence of that North Pacific high, 1028 to 1032 millibars off the coast. Going into Alaska, a cool weather pattern, deep southwesterly flow into the state. We do have a large area of wind advisories running through Thursday in the northern and western interior. This region right here, due to those strong southwesterlies that runs from Alakaket to Bettles, Galena, and into the Yukon Flats. On the western coast, very stormy. We have a mix of coastal flood advisories high surf advisories, and high wind warnings, especially west of Nome. In Canada, we have continued air quality advisories in the northern prairies up to Great Slave Lake, I think that is, up around Yellowknife. 
We do have a lot of wildfire smoke continuing to persist. We have heat warnings in effect for the farming districts just south and west of Drumheller in Alberta. Temperatures into the mid-80s there. Heat warnings out for extreme northwestern Ontario due to temperatures in the mid-80s. And a few severe warnings in effect for the areas just east of Lake Winnipegosis in Manitoba. Grand Rapids for small hail, gusty winds, and heavy rains. A quick look at the seven-day tropical forecast. You don't often see this in late August, so I hope this is not the calm before the storm. In fact, this could prime some of the ocean heat content values in this area, so we'll continue to pay close attention. And we can just take a quick look at the tropical forecast in that area. Just a couple of weak easterly waves moving through the trades into Cuba and Dominican Republic. But overall, rather calm. We go all the way through Wednesday and Thursday next week. Another easterly wave moving across that same area, but just not really looking for much in the way of development. So that brings us back to our more conventional charts, and this indicates long wave troughing on the west coast and on the east coast, ridging in the central plains emanating from this subtropical high in west Texas, and that, of course, is where the heat is concentrated. And a split flow pattern being indicated, one branch through the western U.S., as we mentioned earlier, rounding the base of these troughs, and a separate branch up to the north associated with that active weather pattern in Northwest Territories and Nunavut. So let's take this forward through the rest of the week into the weekend. Really not much change over the next 48 hours. Some strengthening of this trough on the West Coast. So that will become our focus as we go into Friday and Saturday. The ridging holds tight across Texas, so the hot weather will return once again across the state, and it will be expanding northward a little bit going into the weekend. This trough on the west coast gradually opens up and lifts to the northeast into Canada, and then we go into next week, and we see this subtropical high start to float northward a little bit into Missouri, in Kansas, so the heat will be carried northward, and that puts uh, the Gulf Coast region under this weak easterly flow, and that can bring up the precipitation chances just a little bit and cool the weather also, especially in places like Houston and New Orleans. And we go to the very end of the period. This is late next week. And we see the flow down to the south, weakening, a little bit of troughing in the central U.S. And we go back to more of a single jet stream pattern across Canada into Quebec. So let's take a look at our forecast, starting with the chart for tonight. Yeah, we're going to be seeing some convective complexes all the way from Rapid City, Pierre, down into western Nebraska, and maybe down towards Denver. We go into the overnight hours, 1 a.m., 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, and into the afternoon. So here's the setup for tomorrow afternoon going into tomorrow evening. We still continue with that stationary front in the Gulf Coast region into the Caprock area of Texas. It will be continued cold in the northeastern U.S., highs only 72 at Albany, 76 at New York City, and 80 at Washington, D.C., Temperatures coming up in the remainder of Texas around Dallas, East Texas, as we break down that cold backdoor front. We will see a high of 100 at DFW and 104 at San Antonio. Maybe a few people will get some of these elevated showers and storms. And again, there will be strong winds associated with those showers. 110s in the Abilene area once again. The Storm Prediction Center has a couple marginal risk areas in the northern high plains, looking at the Grand Forks Fargo area near the secluded front, and the North Platte Goodland area near this intersection of fronts and this low pressure system. Southwest monsoon pattern continues, very good precip chances all through the eastern Arizona mountains and high deserts up into Utah and the Colorado Rockies, looking at 
80% chance of precip at Flagstaff and 70% at Gallup. Let's take this into Thursday night into Friday. Bring that up to peak heating, and it is going to be another active monsoon pattern through the southwest up into the central Rockies, and we've got the combination of that with increasing flow aloft that will augment some of this convection in the central and northern plains. We are looking at a marginal risk across western Colorado, marginal risk for severe weather, basically this area right here, the Rockies to the Wasatch Range, that includes Grand Junction, Moab, Green River, Utah, located right there, and Green River, Wyoming. Also, Rock Springs may be looking at a chance for severe weather. That will be, once again, that combination of moisture with strong upper-level flow. You can kind of see that looking at this thickness field, the dashed red lines. Look at how tightly packed those are. That is an indicator of stronger upper-level flow. Warming up into the 70s in the northeastern U.S. on Friday, a few 80s popping up in Pennsylvania, and continued hot in Texas for Friday. Temperatures near 100 in the I-35 corridor with 108 at Abilene. So how is Saturday looking? We bring that up to peak convective peak afternoon temperatures, I should say. The heat is starting to spread up there into Kansas, interacting with that stronger flow aloft, and that will produce some showers in that area. Looking for highs of 101 at Wichita, 101 at Dodge City, and 99 for Oklahoma City. In Texas, same old story, but we're taking the edge off of those temperatures, looking at only 102 for Abilene, and a big cool down underway in the northwestern U.S., Looking for highs of only 60s at Seattle and Portland, and 50s and 60s in the mountains. That would be really nice here in Texas, but no chance of that. The monsoon begins diminishing in Arizona and New Mexico, basically focusing on the Four Corners area. Only the White Mountains and maybe Douglas getting a few stray showers. Then we go into the remainder of the weekend for Sunday. It is going to be active in Colorado and the Four Corners area. Not a whole lot going on in Arizona. Continued very cool in the northern Rockies, looking for a high of 64 at Butte with 50s in Yellowstone National Park. And we go into Monday. The monsoon mostly focuses on the Continental Divide area. Colorado dries out. Some MCS activity possible up there in Wisconsin. And there's the forecast for Tuesday. You can check out your favorite area. This is interesting, a big outbreak of cold air into the northern plains. And this could just be the GFS cold bias, but they're bringing that cold air all the way down to Texas later in the week with organized storm activity. This is more of an October type pattern. So we'll just see about that. And that's all for this episode of Forecast Lab. Remember that this is a viewer-supported program, so if you want to see these episodes continue, we do need your support. You can go to Patreon or go to weathergraphics.com and pick up a book or a software program. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and Thursday, and we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition. Take care, and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.